So, welcome back to part two of the video about the ENV 200. Now, the video that went out just over a week ago it's had over 10,000 views, which is fantastic. So, thanks for watching. And it certainly struck a nerve with a lot of people. So, I've printed off some of the most commonly asked questions in the comments <clears throat> and I'm going to attempt to answer them. Um, I won't quote, well, I will, I'm going to quote some names. Captain Pugwash was particularly upset by my video, as was a Gary Scott. So, Gary Scott and Captain Pugwash. What they said, in essence, is um, that I was twisting the figures, and a lot of people have said that I'm not mentioning the cost new of the ENV 200 when it was new in 2015 against a new NV 200 diesel which is a fair point I should have mentioned it in the video but at least it got you all commenting so I've done some research and a new diesel NV 200 Ascent in 2015 had a list price list price of £14,695 plus VAT the ENV 200 Ascenter that's the electric version in 2015, had a list price of, and Captain Pugwash said it was £31,000. It was actually £26,000. So I can hear you all now crying, well, there you go. That's a £12,000 extra price for the electric version back in 2015. So what a waste of time your video was, Jonathan. You twisted the figures. That is not correct. That 10 mile ENV 200 I sold to Colin of Sinclair Office Supplies back in 2015, uh, beginning of 2016. It was a pre reg, I think it was about three or four months old, 10 miles on the clock. I sold it to Colin for £14,515 plus VAT as a pre reg with 10 miles on the clock. So you could have had a new diesel for 14.6 or my electric one for 14.5. So mine was actually uh, just under £100 cheaper for a new vehicle. So when everyone talks about list price, nobody pays list price for a vehicle. There's always that headline list price. But by the time you take into account discounts from the manufacturer, special offers from the franchise dealer, this, that and the other in order for a, a dealership or a manufacturer to make a sale, the actual price you pay is never list. It really, really isn't. So it's another subject as to why they list them at £31,000 new. I don't know. But the reality is, and other than me showing you my invoice <laughs> from Nissan, I sold it to Colin for £14,515 back in 2015. So they were virtually the same price. Okay. Um, all the other questions were very similar to that. I missed out the cost, which I've just covered. The other interesting one was from a Gary Churchill. He was basically saying the numbers do stack up, but you don't mention about distance. Maximum real world range is 100 miles. Well, again, I did show a screenshot. Real world range is around 70 to 80 in a 24 kilowatt hour. A 40 kilowatt hour ENV 200 will get around 120, 130 miles range. Uh, Gary goes on to say that basically he likes the idea. He does 150 miles every day in his transit custom. The battery tape isn't quite there yet. Quite right. At the moment, there is not any EV vans that can do that sort of range non-stop. But as you quite rightly acknowledge, the technology is coming where I can see in the not too distant future a van, a commercial vehicle, being able to do 150 miles plus easily. Uh, but at the moment, it's not for everybody. It wouldn't suit a courier, for instance, doing, I don't know, 2,000 miles a week, um, it, it wouldn't fit into their, their routine of driving. That's true. How much is the bas battery replacement cost for the EV? Around £4,000. Again, uh, there is several companies now uh, swapping batteries for higher capacity batteries. 
there's one in the Netherlands. Uh, well, there's, there's a whole raft of companies now offering battery upgrades. Um, so it costs us around £4,000. Another question is that oh, I forgot to factor in the cost of leasing the batteries. I do not like the battery leasing model. It was predominantly from Renault. They have now dropped it with a 50 kilowatt, uh, 52 kilowatt hour Renault Zoe. It's just outright purchase. The um, cost of leasing the batteries, Nissan for a while did have a flex offering. So it was called a, an ENV 200 flex where you did lease the batteries. But I'd say they're about one or two percent of EVs, ENVs on the road are flex. A good 95 to 96 percent of all ENV on the road are outright purchased. So there is no cost to lease the batteries. One nice comment was from Michelle Williams of CNC Taxis, and I'll put an image up now of CNC Taxis and their ENV 200 combi van which is the same as a van, it's just got windows and seats in the back. She's done 177,000 miles in her Combi ENV. I'll just leave that there. So thanks for all your comments. It's not for everybody. If you don't want an EV, nobody's forcing you to have an EV. Yes, I am fanatical. Yes, I'm enthusiastic about EVs. Um, I don't think I was too slanted and twisted the figures i just said it as it was a lot of people have said uh, well you're a bit unfair on the diesel engine i'm only going on figures from an naa patrolman who i know really really well who's just sent me those videos of diesel engine failures and also you can talk to most mechanics in most garages about diesel engines and they those repairs that i mentioned are one of the most common with a diesel engine. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm sure this will also generate lots of comments. And uh, if you have been, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.